We will check back. Developing right now, devastated again just after midnight our time. A 7.3 quake hit Nepal near the Chinese border between Kathmandu and Mount Everest. At least 42 people are confirmed dead right now, nearly a thousand injured. A video coming in this morning shows just terrified people fleeing into the streets there of Kathmandu to get away from the buildings that could call, fall down and crush them. This comes less than three weeks, of course, after that huge quake in that same area killed more than 8,000 people. All right, let's get to Kale with more on that earthquake. What are you learning, Kale? Yeah, I was just able to establish a FaceTime connection about 20 minutes ago with a Seattle man who is in Kathmandu right now to help with aid efforts. He is safe. The interview may be a little difficult to hear, but listen to how he described that earthquake that he felt from the top floor of the hospital he was in. When it started shaking the entire building, I was able to get together with some of my colleagues and we uh, rushed down the stairs, recovering our heads and uh, uh, made it out there. That is Justin Chen. Now, despite being told they should leave, Chen and a colleague went back to help a patient who had just had his leg amputated. They are all safe this morning. We have this video of the shaking the moment it started from a San Francisco-based aid worker who was in a village outside Kathmandu. You can hear the rumbling as he works his way down a flight of stairs into the streets below. And then the earthquake also interrupting Parliament, the shaking sending people running for the exits as it intensified. Now, it is about 6.30 in the evening right now in Nepal and uh, Justin Chen who you heard from says that right now most people plan to sleep outside their homes concerned that there could be additional strong aftershocks there have already been at least six of magnitude five or greater and one magnitude 6.3. Much more, of course, as we get it out here this morning. For now, we're live in the live desk. Kel Thompson, back to you. It's a devastating three weeks for them. Meanwhile, keep you up to date here. Two Seattle teenagers, Bailey Miola and Sydney Schumacher, were trekking in the Himalayas when that first quake hit back on April 25th. Schumacher's two brothers went to Nepal to try to find the girls. Just last night, their family posted that the two men had just descended from the Langtang Valley and were headed back up to the state soon. We don't know exactly where they were at the time of this morning's quake. However, we will be checking in with the family to see if they have had any contact with the brothers. Developing right now, a U.S. Marine helicopter has been declared missing on a humanitarian mission in Nepal. This after a second major earthquake within just three weeks. New numbers just out this morning put the death toll now at 37 in Nepal, 16 in neighboring India, but those numbers are expected to rise. ABC Scott Goldberg has the latest. It was like an instant replay. People in Kathmandu pouring into the streets today after another powerful earthquake hit the capital. Hear the heavy breathing as one person rushes to safety. At the airport, people scrambled, not for their flights, but for open space on the tarmac. And dust rises after part of an ancient temple collapses, the workers running for their lives out of another building. Nepal's parliament was in session when the quake hit, a camera capturing the moment when the earth began to move, leaders rushing for the exits as lights flicker and die. The cars were shaking, the, the buildings were swaying, and I think one of the most shocking things was how long the, the earthquake went on for. The new quake once again triggered panic. Sergio Quintana from ABC's San Francisco station, KGO, is in Kathmandu. Thousands of people streamed out of the downtown Tamil district, terrified that some of the buildings were going to collapse on them. Lots of people also immediately shut down their shops and went home. Officials say it was just after midnight when the 7.3 quake struck close to Mount Everest. Minutes later, a powerful aftershock measuring 5.6. Then again, 19 minutes later, another jolt measuring 6.3. Once again, rescue workers are digging through the fresh piles of rubble looking for survivors. One of the world's poorest countries coping with yet another disaster. Scott Goldberg, ABC News, New York. The earthquake hit about how long ago? A couple of hours ago, wasn't it? Yeah, no, uh, 1 p.m. my time, so about uh, 4 uh, I reached Seattle volunteer Justin Chan this morning about four hours after the earthquake. He's in, he's in Kathmandu and was helping in one of the hospitals treating the injured from the first earthquake when this one hit. When it started shaking the entire building, I was able to get together with some of my colleagues and we uh, rushed down the stairs, recovering our heads and uh, uh, made it out there. Chan says he and his colleagues also helped get a man with a recent amputation to safety. In fact, he just posted this picture to Facebook this morning showing him helping neighbors set up a sleeping tent outside for safety tonight.